So welcome everyone to CVI Now's live virtual event all about CVI and adapted physical education, APE. If you're with us on our CVI Now parent group, drop a hello in the comments and feel free to post questions as they come to you. I am Rachel Bennett, the content and community manager for CVI Now here at Perkins, and I'm a CVI mom. When it comes to our kids with CVI, whole child learning and growth is critical to supporting access to their world, movement, exercise, and sports help our kids with CVI develop, build confidence, and foster independence. Plus, we know that recreation and leisure is an important domain of the expanded core curriculum for students who are visually impaired. So what is APE and what does it look like for kids with CVI? I am super excited about our experts today. Megan O'Connell Cop is the coordinator for the physical education department at Perkins. She earned an undergraduate degree in physical education and a master's degree in adaptive PE with a concentration in early childhood blindness. She started her journey at Camp Abilities, a developmental sports camp for kids who are blind and visually impaired. Since 2000, she has been teaching adaptive PE and coordinating sports camps throughout the country for kids who are blind and visually impaired. In 2018, she joined Perkins and enjoys being a part of the coaching, aquatics, enrichment, community outreach, and recreational programs that are offered to students. Maeve Berry is an adapted PE teacher in the DeafBlind program at Perkins, providing adapted physical education to students aged 3 to 22 who are DeafBlind, Deaf, or have multiple disabilities. Her introduction to adaptive sports began at a young age while supporting her cousin, who was born with spina bifida, in various track and field events. His why can I attitude encouraged Maeve to pursue her current career. Maeve has a degree in sports studies and physical education and a master's in adaptive physical education. Outside of her day-to-day -day teaching duties, Maeve also coaches aquatics, track and field, goal ball at Perkins, and is a coach at Camp Abilities. Maeve is passionate about teaching and believes in providing modified yet equal opportunities to all individuals, regardless of their ability level. Our event um, will run for most likely until 11, 11.05. Um, again, apologies for the late start. Um, I'm really looking forward to learning from Megan and Maeve. So let's get started. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. And Maeve and Megan, so excited. Looks good. Make sure I unmute to begin. There we go. All right, good morning, everybody. Thank you for um, joining us. Uh, my name is Maeve Barry. Um, I'll be presenting here today alongside um, Megan O'Connell Cop. So Megan, I'll hand it over to you to begin. All right, thanks so much. And thanks for the warm welcome, Rachel. Um, it's great to be here. I'm looking forward to um, this morning. So we wanna start with some intended session outcomes for today. Um, participants will gain the content knowledge of physical literacy and adapted physical education or, or APE as it will be referred to throughout um, our presentation, including legal requirements for any child with an IEP. When we refer to physical literacy, we're looking at um, physical literacy being the motivation and confidence, um, the physical competence um, and knowledge, along with the understanding and the value of being responsible for um, being engaged in activities for life, um, whatever those activities may be for each individual child. Um, it's really about developing those fundamental movement skills, whatever those may be, locomotor, non-locomotor skills, such as hopping, throwing, catching, um, crawling, creeping, all of those things um, that encompasses uh, proficient movement skills. And in turn, these skills, as we build on these, they uh, strive to give kids the confidence uh, to participate in a variety of activities. And we'll talk more about these as we move forward. Um, the second thing, learning how instruction, equipment, activities, and sports can be modified and be made meaningful to include students with CVI. How to identify the goal or primary focus of an activity for a student with CVI during adaptive physical education. 
to gain a better understanding of assessment in adapted PE and how it may be tailored to an individual with CVI, feeling empowered to advocate on behalf of your child with CVI and to ensure that they have access to a healthy, active, and physically engaging life. Um, this session will be split into three major components. The first one is a general generalization of what adapted PE is. Then we will look into cortical cerebral visual impairment in adapted PE. And then we'll look at some of the adaptations and modifications to the equipment um, and environment as we move forward. Uh, keeping in mind as we uh, run through our presentation is gymnasiums and aquatic facilities can be very, very complex and overwhelming for many kids um, and students with CVI and smaller class sizes um, without typical gymnasium chaos um, are optimal as we, as we move forward here. Um, having said that, it's not always the case. Um, it's out of our control and um, but striving to keep that in mind as you work with your child's uh, physical education or adapted physical education teacher is, is imperative. Okay. Adapted physical education. Um, this is a slide of our professional umbrellas in which we um, find our teachings and standards from. So the first quote I just wanna take from our Adapted Physical Education National Standards, APENS. Adapt, uh, quote, adapted physical education is a physical education which has been adapted or modified so that it is appropriate for the person with a disability as it is for a person without a disability. Uh, the second one is from our national uh, uh, chapter, which is the Society of Health and Physical Educators of America, SHAPE. Quote, the goal of physical education is to develop physically literate individuals who have the knowledge, skills, and confidence to enjoy a lifetime of healthful physical activity. It's important for uh, physical education teachers to be aware and be members, be um, a collaborative um, participant within these organizations, among others that may not be listed here. Um, attend conferences, be active within um, the profession to increase knowledge of how to work with uh, students with CVI and students of all abilities and to be able to provide meaningful inclusion. Um, adaptive physical education under special education um, as it is pertained to IDEA is a direct service. Unlike OT, PT, um, speech and language, every student with a disability should have adaptive PE um, in the least restrictive uh, environment as possible. Um, a formal organized program is not a setting. Um, we move away from the term gym class um, so that qualified adapted PE teachers um, who have undergrads in PE or related subject matter um, are there at the helm teaching your child. Um, we will talk a little bit more about rights law um, one other uh, area of our profession is the American Association for Physical Activity and Recreation, the AAPAR. Um, they, they echo um, the idea of IDEA and special education that includes physical education. It outlines the criteria for um, what an adapted PE teacher is. Um, not all gen ed PE teachers meet this criteria. So it's so important um, as you are um, advocating and um, having your child participate in a physical education program that you ask and you press these to make sure that those teachers, either gen, uh, the general physical education teachers or adapted PE teachers are qualified. Um, uh, sometimes it's a bachelor in physical education, hours in the field after that, additional coursework in adapted PE. Those are all um, things that are, are appropriate for um, someone who's teaching kids with disabilities. So this next slide is a glimpse of what adapted PE encompasses. 
um, we have uh, the cognitive side, the psychomotor and affective side. Um, this, is, this is how our profession is made up and what we look to uh, for students to be able to go ahead and learn as, as all educators do. The cognitive piece really focuses on the development of knowledge, um, learning the rules, counting and application. And the psychomotor domain addresses motion, coordination, reflexes, that moving piece um, that people are overly familiar with uh, in physical education. And then the effective domain that really looks towards the feelings, attitudes, and overall values about movement whether they are positive or negative. Certainly as teachers, um, we want those to be positive, but um, it could be a choice when we look at negative, it could be, I like this, not that. And being able to provide students with those tools um, to be able to make those decisions as we go. Um, another thing is, is as we talk about uh, adaptive PE, um, the name is, is important as we look um, at how we are um, serving. It's adapted um, PE, unlike uh, adaptive. So adapted is referring to modifying the program or curriculum, whereas adaptive uh, is referring to adapting equipment. So we, um, as adapted PE teachers, we are looking to modify that program um, and curriculum. So um, there's certainly uh, studies and support linking uh, physical education and movement where it improves uh, language development, brain health, classroom-based learning uh, when PE is offered. So it's so important. Um, collaboration, we do a lot of that, collaborating with other disciplines. We're the perfect fit for uh, a collaboration um, with physical, physical therapy, occupational therapy, speech and language, uh, mobility, music therapy, and so on and so forth. Um, it, it, we provide a team approach and collaborate within that. And um, it's an opportunity to really get um, the best motor team available for, um, for our students and something to keep in mind as uh, you move forward with advocating for your child to have physical education um, and as Rachel mentioned earlier, um, ECC components are so important. Yes, there's the, the recreation piece, but um, also physical education is a place where um, all of the ECC components uh, can be touched on. Um, the life, it's, it provides access to lifelong physical health and wellness through those um, and how they are interpreted for the best well-rounded experience. Um, Another thing with adapted PE and in the world of adapted PE, you may hear um, physical education versus physical activity. Um, there's no doubt kids need both. Uh, without both, there are missed opportunities. Physical education refers to as the instructional piece and then physical activity really hones in on the application of, of those skills and that movement piece. Uh, physical education should be taught by a certified PE teacher, um, and lessons should be based on PE outcomes and standards um, from the, that, those national umbrellas and organizations that we talked about a couple slides ago. Um, and the sequence to the outcomes um, should be met to, um, based on those standards as well. The physical activity aspect, um, supervised by anybody, any type of movement, um, structured or unstructured, but again, beneficial um, to the whole student. In a couple of slides, we're gonna talk, um, we'll talk a little bit more about benefits, but both physical education and physical activity work to decrease stress, um, increase academic performance, improve fitness and movement-based activities, and help to prevent or delay onset onset of injury or disease, which is so important um, for, for kids. And Maeve will expand more on this uh, in a few slides. So there is um, 
no doubt that movement can be challenging and hard and um, we want adapted PE programs to be able to provide the best and safest opportunities uh, for kids to be active. Thanks, Megan. Um, this next slide, the title is APE and why is it important? Um, I think what Megan just outlined there is exactly what is important. Um, you know, to look at it in layman's terms, we want, what do we want from our life? We want to be healthy, we want to be happy, we want to have friends, we want to feel valued. Um, and I think physical activity and physical education, learning through physical education can certainly do that for us. Um, some points to touch on here, obviously, um, they seem like no brainers, but they are essential when looking at the holistic view or the whole person. So APE and what children get from a young age impacts future health and wellness, promotes intellectual, emotional and physical health, helps brain development and self-efficacy, ample opportunities for social interactions, group and individual activities. And then we look at who is entitled to APE. What can it look like? Um, it encompasses all areas of the learner, the holistic viewpoint, lays the foundation for what we're most likely to continue into later years. And fitness equals independence. I often give the example of um, if an individual visits a YMCA or has the opportunity to lay the foundational skills as a young person for wellness and continuing that into adulthood if you are more likely to go out and go to a fitness center or work out, you're more likely to use all of the skills that Megan had touched upon from the expanded core curriculum, the likes of your orientation and mobility to get to the YMCA, your ADL skills with regard to changing to go to work out, your cognitive skills, just even in planning your day. I'll need sneakers, do I pack my bag? Will I need a snack afterwards? I'll bring water. It's all of that forward thinking that comes with just a small event, which is getting out there and doing some exercise. Moving on, we wanted to share um, part of our mission that we have here. Um, we are a five person strong team here at Perkins, um, all of whom are adapted physical education teachers. Um, this is a mission that's part of our full curriculum, which was uh, developed in 2007. To read the quote, our goal is to ensure that every student, regardless of ability, has access to a variety of movement concepts, skills and experiences, both on campus and in the community that promotes the benefits of health, wellness and lifelong fitness. The Adapted Physical Education programs at Perkins School for the Blind are tailored to meet the motor, sensory, neural developmental needs of every student. That also encompasses a lot of our students who have been diagnosed with CVI or who present with CVI-like tendencies. So in looking at that, what does it mean? We are in a very privileged position here at Perkins. Like I said, we have a five strong person team not every school district has that. We do have a swimming pool on campus. We have an after school um, athletic program where we cover four sports in the year. We have recreational and enrichment opportunities throughout the school year. We are in a very privileged position. But that's not to say that every school district cannot provide something which meets the needs which your student and child is legally um, entitled to. So what we do here at Perkins, some of the activities um, that are included in our day-to-day, -day, we have aquatics, uh, modified competitive sports, health-related fitness, and lifetime fitness, recreation, community access, and mainstream sports, blind sports, um, a lot of social uh, group games, cooperative games, and a lot of uh, the fundamental motor skills that are embedded in those activities. There are so many things that go hand in hand with that, including enjoyment, fun, friendships, um, completing meaningful tasks, again, feeling valued, feeling proud, 
and enjoying movement. And that's something that every child is certainly um, entitled to. And as Megan um, touched upon beforehand, um, adapted physical education is a direct service on like a related service like physical therapy or occupational therapy. Um, some of our, many of our team members will collaborate. For example, a student may come to adapted PE class in their gait trainer, which we have touched base with the physical therapist on to know how to assist that student when they're in their gait trainer. But suddenly it opens up a whole new avenue to what this student is capable of doing in that new physical position. Or you might consult with a speech language pathologist regarding choice making and use of assistive technology um, it, within the realm of adapted physical education. Um, it's one of the best places to have that collaboration and cross team approach. Um, and again, you can't take away from the enjoyment, the fun, and some of these photographs can certainly um, show that. On the second slide, we just have some examples of basic examples, how we modify activities. Um, you know, we have a picture of just some um, footballs resting on a cone. This was a, a unit that we did with um, all students who happen to be in wheelchairs and it's a modified football unit. There are obviously a lot of things that look like a typical football game in our version of our football field here in our gym. Um, but there's no reason why activities cannot be modified um, to the degree that they can still be enjoyed by everybody who would like to complete them. Down in the bottom right, we have um, a large group activity, um, kind of a tug of war game that we had going on um, with just some added visual um, uh, representation for those who needed it. Again, enjoying the outside, enjoying team approach, enjoying uh, being alongside one another. I'll hand back over to Megan. So we'll, we'll, we'll kind of uh, transfer into talking about uh, special education and physical education um, and advocating for um, children. So one uh, really great resource is uh, Rights Law and the website uh, and law has information and resources for parents, caregivers, teachers, et cetera, to reference um, when advocating for appropriate and meaningful adapted PE. Uh, it defines what physical education is, how it should be offered, IDEA requirements for physical education, and who should be teaching um, physical education. So um, this is from uh, Wright's Law, quote, if your child three to 21 has a disability and an IEP, physical education should be included as a part of the special education program it can include goals and objectives. The time should be equal to non-disabled peers, even if other students don't have it or the school doesn't have a physical education program, your child is entitled by law under IDEA's definition of special education. Um, it can be a struggle for some schools or districts to um, make this happen and to ac accept um, and that at times, and we would just encourage parents and caregivers and teachers and teams uh, to keep advocating for adapted physical education uh, for kids. It's so important. Um, physical education should be taught by a specialized or trained PE teacher in adapted PE. Um, I touched on this a few slides ago, um, an undergrad in physical education with and or a master's in adapted PE with additional coursework and or field hours to be able to provide um, experience in teaching kids with disabilities. Um, some states require uh, an adapted PE teacher and others, um, others do not. Uh, some of the states that require a certified adapted PE teacher, um, California, Louisiana, Maine, uh, Michigan, Minnesota, uh, Nebraska, Ohio, Oregon, uh, Rhode Island, South Dakota, Wisconsin, and Wyoming. Um, so not all. Um, encourage your district to hire a qualified certified adapted PE teacher. 
or at the very least a licensed PE and adapted PE teacher. Um, some states also um, have state approved eligibility and rules for uh, an adapted physical ed educator. There's only three of them, California, Louisiana, and Minnesota. Um, otherwise, uh, it's left to the discretion of the district or school to come up with criteria for specially designed physical education programs for kids with disabilities. Um, and then just to, and, and another kind of note is talking about where, um, where kids will receive physical education. Um, so the continuum, continuum of the physical education placement. So of course, we always wanna look from the very least restrictive um, environment to the most restrictive. And in physical education, that can look like um, starting in a general PE class, uh, general PE, then to general PE and adapted PE as a dual approach. Uh, it's important that there is um, on this level that there is an adapted PE teacher there to help modify activities and the environment for students. Uh, the next one would be adapted PE as a pullout. And then uh, lastly, a separate program. So the takeaway from that was um, really appropriate options um, that need to be available to be able to meet the meet all individual needs for physical education programming. I think Megan makes a really good point there as well about, um, you know, districts having to struggle for it, as we know well that parents have to struggle for things. And I'm sure advocating for services for your child is not an easy feat. Um, I would like to say that oftentimes the teacher is caught in the middle with regard to a general physical education teacher suddenly being thrust into the adapted PE world without any type of experience or confidence. And I'm sure a lot of people have heard that the term, I don't want them to get injured. I don't want them to get hurt. And it comes back to the I, when it should be the focus, the focus of the whole thing should be the student. They should be the I. I want them to enjoy themselves. I want them to have a wholesome experience. And it's important to note that there is a gap with regard to training and preparedness within the teaching environment, which myself, Megan, some of the other teachers on campus and those professional organizations that we referenced in the beginning, really try to bridge that gap to include students, not just in the corner of a gymnasium doing their own thing, but in a meaningful manner that they can be valued and feel like they are getting the same opportunity as their non-disabled peers. So as the uh, title of our presentation today, um, CVI in APE. So it is a huge topic, um, one that we have all received training on, which we're very thankful for here through Perkins. Um, that training will prepare you for working with one student. Because as we know, every single student with CVI is completely different. The most important thing I would implore upon you today is to know your student, build those relationships. As a teacher, as a power educator, as a teaching assistant, as a TVI, you need to know your student because no textbook is going to teach you anything about that child and what they are, what they like, who they are, um, what they enjoy. And I think that's the main takeaway point from today is to get to know that individual student. Yes, it will take time. And if you are a general PE teacher and you have 10 students in an adapted PE class, you will need to get to know all of those 10 students in the same way that you get to know the 30 children that you have in a general PE class. Bringing it back to the slide, I think the most important question here that we often reference in our classes when planning is what is the overall goal of the activity? And that's also a question that you could pose to a teacher who's teaching your child. So for example, I like to use um, 
the example or the analogy of a person who's running on a treadmill, but they're also reading a book. I'm not one of those people. If I'm running on a treadmill, I'm trying my hardest not to fall off that treadmill, let alone read the book. I like to read books when I relax. For me, the goal of my activity on a treadmill is to work out, is to be safe and maybe, you know, have a new PR for that day. It's the same thing for a student with CBI. If you have them walking on a treadmill, are they looking and staring at the numbers? Do we need to adapt and change the whole monitor of a treadmill for them to look? But what's the goal? Is it for them to look and watch the numbers or is their goal to be safe and physically active? So using that term, I would like to, you to think of that when we show our examples later on in the photographs and videos of young individuals here at Perkins um, completing different forms of physical activity. Think to yourself, what is the goal? Next up, I mean, I referenced already importance of collaboration with the TVI. Um, again, at Perkins, we are very fortunate where we can have, we have very close relationships with classroom teachers. Um, those who know all of the visual needs for their students, they know exactly the impact of what their favorite color, what their visual field is, the impact of clutter and what that might mean to the student. And also how much they have been training their vision all day and potentially they might need a break during adaptive physical education class where they just get to have fun, turn on some music and get to dance and they get to almost put the blinders on and shut off that vision piece and just enjoy through other senses and movement for that time. We often do adopt typical recommendations um, for those who, with visual impairments and then add additional CVI environmental modifications. So like I said, the reduced visual stimuli, um, brightly colored materials, reduced noise, etc. And oftentimes um, we receive questions and such about activities, fast paced activities, basketball, soccer, floor hockey, activities where there's a lot of movement and someone with CBI will struggle with maintaining the pace of that activity. And I like to give this example that if you're teaching a unit on invasion sports, so defense versus offense, why can't there be a foosball table in the corner, you know, that you turn and have the little figurines moving and then beach balls over on a, um, a table in a corner and then soccer where you're doing dribbling, you're doing um, passing, et cetera, in another area of the gym and have three options for three different paces of the same activity. You are still learning about offense and defense. You are still learning about tactical play. You are still learning about rules. There's no reason that it should be one size fits all. And you certainly cannot look at a child with CBI through that lens. Other uh, modifications to activities, again, using the example of soccer, could be using a sensory soccer ball that moves at a slower pace. Um, kicking pa kick passes to the wall, which has a darker contrasting color painted below hand. Um, below um, so that the student can can track and visually watch that ball a little bit easier and I'll bet that any student with or without CVI will be going to that area to practice against the darker contrasting wall because it will just help everybody and I think it's very very important again to um, encourage that collaboration that collaborative approach if you do have that general PE teacher who who is on an island on their own, maybe too nervous or scared to say, I don't know what to do with this child, then having them collaborate with the classroom teacher, with um, an OT, with a PT can be completely pivotal to whether that child feels valued in, within that PE class or not. Um, we often receive a lot of questions regarding assessments also. Um, here at Perkins, again, we use a range of assessments, um, which can cover all of the three domains, the psychomotor, affective, and cognitive that Megan had mentioned. Um, oftentimes, we do create our own assessments, and I think it is very, very important to reference that we never use um, 
standardized tests because that's not fair for individuals who have disabilities and particularly for those with CVI. If there was an assessment to be completed, that assessment will only be on that one student. So if you have a student named John, John will do an assessment in the fall, perhaps on the areas of health related fitness or his locomotor or non locomotor skills. Um, but then John will be norm referenced for his scores from the fall in the spring and only John. John will not be compared to Mary or or to Hadid or to Susan or anybody else just to John. And that's a really important um, thing to factor in as well. We'll often look at specific sports skills and then um, student specific, like I said, students, um, it's not norm referenced. To date, there is no um, assessment regarding CVI specifically in the field of adaptive PE. Um, that we are aware of. Um, it's certainly an area where there is a huge deficit. Um, and it's often, like I said, with fast paced activities and a large environment such as a gymnasium, a difficult area to assess in, but it's not impossible. It takes more effort and it takes uh, maybe a creative teacher to come up with um, assessments that suit that one child. And again, collaboration with the classroom teacher or the TBI to again, look at what is the goal of the assessment is, are you assessing them on their physical outcomes or are you assessing them partially on their um, visual um, attendance and um, or the social skills or the aspects that can be um, covered in that class. And to, continued, uh, to continue with our assessments, um, it's always important to reference the fact that age appropriate assessments are always needed. For example, you're never going to assess a preschooler on their ability to complete a wall sit or push ups, whereas potentially for an older individual who's heading into high school college and more health related or fitness based testing, that's what you would be assessing them on. Preschoolers, you're going to be looking at turn taking, attending to others, play based skills, etc. There are also cut off points, um, for example, the um, test for, test of gross motor development test um, only goes to the age of 10. Um, for ages six um, and 17 upwards, there is the competency testing for um, uh, through Brockport physical fitness test um, and the APE assessment scale APEs. Um, Oftentimes we will create our own, like I said, um, and those will only be referenced to the student which with, with which was tested um, originally. So now we will start talking a little bit more about and shift to modifying activities, equipment and the environment for students with CVI. Um, and before we start talking more about this slide, um, we hope that uh, some of these will provide you with some tools um, in your tool bag to bring to your child's um, school and or physical education programs to be able to share um, with that. We know, you know, for physical education teachers, the more content knowledge they have, will lead to um, increased confidence to be able to creatively provide uh, modifications and adaptations for students that are meaningful for students. Uh, and we have put together uh, the next few slides that um, we hope you will be able to um, be able to share and take with you as you see fit. So this picture represents um, a learning table for CBI, something we use. And it's a, it's a relatively simple and low cost way to be able to engage students um, in a variety of ways. Um, I use this table to introduce equipment um, and it is a, it's a desk uh, that we've taken the legs off and have um, put wheels on, uh, on the top. Uh, portion. It's a simple black top and um, the card in a cardboard trifold. So um, the wheels are super important. Um, portability 
uh, is key, especially in physical education, because you just never know where you're going to be um, in what area you may be. Um, for this, the simple black top, um, it can help with impact of spacing, um, object arrangement, uh, clutter, and color it can help simplify those. And then the cardboard trifold, same thing, help decrease the clutter around and increase uh, visual recognition uh, around objects that may be um, introduced at that point. So you'd have a student um, sitting or standing um, at this table and um, whatever type of there. In this picture, there is a turbo jaff for a track and field unit. And the student would be able to, um, it, you'd be able to examine, um, examine this and or um, have the student um, recognize different uh, physical attributes about um, the turbo jab. The next one, um, communication in adapted physical education. Um, as we know, this is a, a critical piece for increasing independence in physical education and making um, meaningful ways to communicate that are student specific um, to be able to have students express their needs, wants, and preferences in adapted physical education. Um, and here are, are a couple of um, examples about some PE choices to promote uh, socialization, personal interest, and self-expression. So um, there are greetings. Um, and for this student in particular, uh, choices on one page was um, uh, what is what worked for her. So she's able to tap one of those to greet, um, greet her peers or teachers or those in her class. There is uh, to the right of that on the top right, it's a walking a picture of walking and um, stretching. So the student, um, the teacher may have both of these on their plan for that day but allowing the student um, time to, or preference as to which one they might wanna do first um, to increase their engagement and independence and in being a part of that adapted PE class. And then moving down to the lower left, there is a bowling activity or a bowling picture and a basketball picture. Um, so making choices, this could be maybe a free time activity or something um, if there's station work within that class that day. And then on the bottom right hand corner, uh, turn taking. So engaging students um, and promoting socialization within class. Um, it's critical for your child's PE teacher to be able to work with the TVI and SLP um, speech and language pathologists to be able to facilitate these communication needs that are so individualized um, for your child. And in addition, not only should the physical education teacher or adapted PE teacher be trained in this, um, but also anyone else in the class who might be working with your child. Um, here's an example of a few environmental modifications. Um, there are markers for identifying areas within a space uh, for location and contrast. Um, it can be multi-purpose used for kids with CVI and or um, kids with disabilities or um, kids without disabilities. So advocating for these types of um, very simple and inexpensive ways uh, within your community and schools um, or even at home. So, um, you know, in the pictures, it shows the red lines on the ground where there's boundaries. And then in the picture to the right, you'll see the red uh, tape behind uh, three of the treadmills. Uh, in our COVID times, um, this is an example of uh, having kids space out. And, um, and then on the treadmill to the right, you'll notice on the right hand, on the medical bar, there is a red um, it's a neoprene, it's, it's actually, you can buy them um, in stores and it's a neoprene um, wrap that can be used on the treadmill um, to have students with TBI um, where appropriate 
um, look and to be able to use that as a guide to um, mount the treadmill. Um, again, some more environmental uh, modifications. Um, highlighted CBI friendly colors to increase physical independence. Um, the teacher could specifically look for these um, identifiers when purchasing equipment um, where applicable. Uh, this is promotes independence for students um, and can assist with the impact of color, impact of spacing or clutter, and certainly uh, visual recognition as well. Again, working with uh, the local community and your schools and implementing these within the environment where your child uh, may attend to promote independence. Yeah, and finally, some um, further environmental modifications that, again, as Megan said, to you, to I, to um, parents of, of children with CVI, they become no brainers, but oftentimes you need to bring this up or share something like this um, at a local facility or at a school gymnasium or um, a quick, you know, um, just indication to people that just because you have the knowledge does not mean that they necessarily have the knowledge. Um, on the left, we have a treadmill. Uh, the safety clip is red. It's a nice puffy um, kind of texture, easy to grip again for anybody. Um, I know certainly I benefit from high contrast colors at times. Um, so here it's, it's nice and identifiable amongst maybe a little bit more of a, a visually um, cluttered area. Second photograph, very, very basic. We've got some nice shiny red tape on that um, on the uh, holder for um, paper cups at the water dispenser. Um, and finally, our all, all of our best friends for this past year, um, a hand sanitizer and Purell. Again, just right there at the point where we want to kind of hone in on for that um, visual acuity right there on that um, push button. Um, we also have um, a nice adapted area, an idea that you could easily transfer to a, a PE teacher or a general teacher within a school. Um, it's got that red puffy um, um, outline around white text with a nice black background um, for a student to see exactly where, um, where his backpack will go. Again, just fostering that independence so that folks are able to do things themselves, feel self-worth, feel dignified, that they don't need somebody hovering over them every minute of every day. Um, in the photograph on the left, we also have uh, coat hooks, uh, which we got some consultation here on our Perkins campus. Um, those are, are nice and large, again, against a white background. You got that high contrast. They're easy to identify um, and well utilized in our um, coat hanging and back backpack area. So we'll move on to more activity modifications. And um, here are two pictures. Uh, the overall goal for this student was to work on core, upper body strength, flexibility and balance with support of the tumble form, which is the big red roller that um, this student is uh, laying over. In the past, um, without uh, the activity modifications, uh, the student would roll out uh, without body awareness or control and would need um, more staff physical support to help with that control. We added in um, a plain background with a, a large black trifold. In fact, this is the same trifold from the learning table that we showed you and a lighted target. So he is uh, able to be on, be prone on the tumble form, walk his hands out. You see him uh, reaching towards that direction to give him um, a, a awareness of which direction and able to prop himself up to work on those fitness components, um, flexibility, balance, strength. Um, and with just a little touch of or prompting on the tumble form from the teacher, 
is all that this student needed to be able to know the activity was done or to come back, roll forward, so on and so forth. So again, increasing um, that independence and um, for the student. Additional activity modifications. This is um, a bowling activity. Um, we would initially use the learning table uh, with a smaller scale tactile map diagram where we would explore the visual attributes of, um, of bowling and the equipment and um, along with the visual curiosities and to what equipment is being used. Um, and then we would come out to this setup and advance to, um, to more of a real life inclusive model um, that's shown here. And the student would then be able to tactically explore um, for some students, um, the red highlighting around the pin setup was uh, meaningful. Um, in the third picture, the ball that we used to put some red tape around it to highlight where the ball was and um, to have a positive impact on color. Um, and then there was a, in the final picture for the bowling ramp, that's a ramp where the student would pick the ball up or place the ball. Um, and we would highlight that with, you can kind of see on the, the right side, you can highlight that with a light to bring out um, the shimmer and or more of a red color um, for, the, for the ramp setting as well. And uh, moving on along some other um, bowling activities. Um, again, this uh, really referring to um, the impact of color, clutter, spacing, and motion um, are all important for these. In the first picture, it's a simple um, tape line for body placement, for a body bowling and body awareness activity um, that is on a wedge mount where the student um, could use that red line to um, engage in place uh, themselves on the red line to roll down the mat uh, with or without assistance. In the middle picture, it's um, an assisted ramp with a tape marker, a red tape marker and highlighted yellow edges on the ramp to help uh, place the ball. And then in the third picture, uh, a simple background to decrease clutter for the targeted area. Um, it could be helpful for some students. In this group of pictures, um, there we uh, pre uh with this equipment and checked it out and then added the accommodations, um, increasing his independence. Um, the low contrast area to help the impact of color and light in this environment and the equipment um, was, was important for this student. Uh, the student loved uh, the light up ball and was engaged with it. And then he discovered um, the lit hoop. It has the little lights around the rim. Um, he found great success um, and it was very meaningful for him to achieve um, making a shot in basketball. And um, it was very important for him to be able to visually access um, the ball and then where to put the ball. So it was, it was neat. It's great to see that. Yeah, I think Megan just did a fantastic job of, of showing while there may be one activity, i.e. bowling, for example, there may need to be multiple modifications because no student would see the eye or any other disability. Um, no two students are alike. Um, here we have um, a young man um, who um, with me was completing uh, what we like to call a CBI warm up. Um, oftentimes we see that uh, for this particular young man and others with CBI, if you're not given that time that you invest explaining what the activity is, what it sounds like, um, it can become quite startling. Um, oftentimes the hands will recoil into themselves, um, we'll see less of that willingness to interact in an activity. Um, here this young man was part of our physically active recreation in the community class. Um, 
he is graduating this year. So this is a nice little routine that we have written up and, and we'll go with him to his next placement um, as an activity that he can certainly um, complete in the community. So here in the photograph on the left, it's just a basic um, piece of foam that we carry in a, in a backpack that comes with us um, to every outing that we went on. Um, the golf ball is laid on the foam. We talked about it. We talked about the physical, uh, the visual attributes of the ball, um, described a lot of the tactile features. Um, we touched it a couple of times. We dropped it. We recognized and warmed up to the idea that this is what we will hear. This is what we will, um, what it feels like. And then we did the same thing uh, with the golf club. Um, and over time, when you did invest that time um, with this young man, we saw a longer time with his hand on the club, a longer time, um, more, a, a greater range of motion. He was willing to move more. He was warming up, if you like, to the activity. And by the end, every time we knocked that ball um, with the golf club, his head went in the direction of, um, of where we were hitting the ball. And it was a really nice sense of satisfaction that he had made contact with the ball. He had hit that ball and something that he was really, really um, successful at, which was a wonderful opportunity um, to have. Um, in these next photographs, um, this wonderful young man here is actually completing a visual warm up. Um, you'll see that he's in a, a stander, um, which his classroom teacher had you know, brought into the classroom with him. And as a group, we were able to um, place him in his stander. Uh, the activity is um, hockey, which we were going to play um, on, in three different um, areas, let's say. We did our visual warm up here. We talked about the equipment we would use um, co-workers wearing nice dark colors. We had the black curtain hanging. Um, this young man had time to warm up, hear about the um, visual attributes of each piece of equipment, touch it, and then was given a break. Given a break from all of that information. Then we moved over to um, this area, which is a um, learning table, as Megan had referenced, um, to try and replicate so almost we went from kind of keeping his world small for that visual warm up, then making it a little bit bigger. And then finally, when we moved to um, playing floor hockey, we had the excitement, we had the familiar noises. So we brought it into from what he needed and then all the way to what the game typically looks like. And here we have some other examples of um, young ladies sitting at, at our learning table with a lit up goal um, again, the goal of this activity was um, head control, looking at that goal um, and gripping the instruments. Um, here we have some different rackets and um, yeah, uh, floor hockey, um, scooter hockey sticks. Um, but we ended up just having so much fun that <laughs> the goal was, was, uh, was multiple um, for this for this um, event. And you can see the student and the photograph on the left really focusing on that ball. And that's just a flashlight, again, which a teacher could have in their backpack, call it a CVI um, you know, toolbox, for example, and pull it out just to get some of that awareness. Um, because oftentimes we do see students become a little bit inverted and they're a little unfamiliar with what's outside of their own world. So if we can open up some of those avenues, I think that's really, really important for them. In this picture, um, we have uh, the ramp again, that can be, um, this ramp happens to be constructed out of cardboard, um, painted black and with yellow highlights on the side for boundaries. Um, you can't see as well in this picture, um, but if you remember from the bowling picture, there is a red, um, a red marker at the end where the student would place the ball. So as the student picked up the ball, uh, the student placed it on that red. And this is actually a, an extension of the student um, pushing the ball down the ramp. In the picture on the right, uh, it's uh, this is for a warm up, and um, this was used for one student where the red outline around the body to demonstrate um, body movements and to draw visual recognition 
um, towards how to do these and to be able to um, increase that independence with warm-up. In this slide, we have a very quick video um, to showcase a young man, um, a very competent and confident young man um, with CDI using a visual timer. The goal of the activity was um, for him to complete um, it, an exercise routine independently, but we were finding that um, his gauge of how long to complete each exercise for was a little bit off. Sometimes he would stop and sign stop a little prematurely um, and then he was relying on the teacher to overly prompt to stop or to start an exercise um, in collaboration with his um, teacher um, she came up with this visual timer which you'll see him using um, during this short video and i'd just like to draw your attention to his positioning and think in your mind where this young man's visual um, his visual field might be. I think that video really shows that um, we can foster independence and there's no reason that this young man, um, who is a very active young man, can't transfer this to a fitness center or that a general PE teacher couldn't have an iPad with this visual timer set up on his left, which is where his preferred visual field is, um, and then the rest of the group following, you know, the same activities, the same exercises during large group instruction. I'd also like to bring your attention to the fact that the teacher is there just for standby supervision, just to make sure that he's following the program set for him. Um, and when he needed, required that prompting, the teacher moves in to correct him within, again, where he can see him, where he can visually attend and just get that correction for raising his arms up nice and high. Three, two, one, high. Mm -hmm. So here is a um, golf activity where we pre-taught the visual att attributes of the ball and um, the club and the overview of skills. Um, and we modified the equipment to meet the needs of the student in this golf activity. Um, we really had to um, control the impact of, of color using a preferred color and the light. Um, and then um, his student was able to um, independently engage with this um, as needed. And this slide is uh, from a modified weight training program. Uh, that we did and looked at, um, it was important to um, look at the impact of light and clutter, color and visual field abilities for this student. To prevent um, blending, you'll see in the first photo, there is a, back, a black background behind the bar, the weight bar, um, to decrease the clutter in the environment. And then there is, um, we attached a light with a red scarf 
over it um, to enhance color, uh, color preference and movement for the student. Um, it was also a time um, which sometimes is, is out of our control as physical education teachers, but um, it was important for this student to have this time uh, without other students in the area um, to make an impact uh, where there was a quiet, um, quieter environment in the gymnasium or in the weight room. So eventually the student was able to reach and uh, pull the bar uh, for the activity um, with all on his own. Um, visual field abilities were, are very difficult uh, for this student. So um, it was really, really neat to see the student succeed um, with the support and success uh, over time. So I think that just about wraps up um, our presentation. Um, Rachel, I can um, bring it back. Thank you so, so much, Megan and Maeve. That was really wonderful. I, so many um, inspiring ideas. I just wanna get out there with my Henry and get him golfing or something. Um, but it just really, I love how you focused on what's the goal of the activity and there's no one size fits all. You really have to be student centered and student specific. And there's so many different ways you can incorporate CVI adaptations and supports to really meet the child's needs. Um, do you have time for two questions? Okay. Um, first is, do you suggest that all students with CVI who have an IEP to have an APE goal? That's a, that's a big one. It, it really, um, it's, hard, it's hard to give a yes or no on this, but sure. I, I think, um, you know, having the whole team involvement and specifically related to this presentation, making sure that um, an adapted PE teacher is present for that. Mm -hmm. um, maybe. I yeah, I completely agree, uh, Megan. I think that's a great question. Um, it's one that should be, again, student-centered. It shouldn't mm -hmm. necessarily be around, oh, in APE class, they will do this. It should be looking at the whole person, um, mm -hmm. but perhaps they have more opportunities to work on that objective in APE class. Um, we often have some social, um, some uh, goals that are related to social or the cognitive um, piece. We've had numeracy and literacy um, objectives that are uh, presented under the umbrella of literacy, but during our IEP, the classroom teacher will then say, oh, and this objective is coming from APE, and we will have that um, crossover a little bit. It does become a little bit tricky when uh, reporting for uh, sure. progress reports, but again, yeah. I, think, I think it's having that collaborative approach. Um, if you're going for something more physical and streamlined, like pace uh, covering a certain um, distance or completing activities um, in a certain amount of time. I think that can be a little bit more um, directly related to APE, but there could be something in there linking perhaps orientation, orientation and mobility, you know, to have a physical skills area um, or um, something of that sort. That's wonderful. I, I know shared goals are hard, but I, I really love them. I feel like done well. I mean, our kids can really blossom. So that's beautiful. Okay, and the second question is from a CVA parent. When you have a PE teacher with 30 students and one needs a PE, who should be doing the adaptations? This is in public school. The PE teacher, classroom teacher, para, or all? So this, this, this too can be a tricky one. Um, I think everybody's engagement within it um, you know, is there, is it just a general PE teacher there? Is there an adapted PE teacher there? If, um, and hopefully there is an adapted PE teacher there, um, it would, it would primarily fall to that person. Um, but having the whole team with paras, um, teachers, PBI, to be able to come up with, um, the best, uh, best solutions for, you know, color presence, uh, color preference, and those, all those types of things mm -hmm. um, with the CBI um, attributes and to work within the team to come up with those is key, but it would hopefully fall to the adapted PE teacher. Right, I totally agree um, with Megan in that 
you know, if we were to take that example of soccer, as we referenced during the presentation, um, if it is the, the te PE teacher who's defining this as the unit that we're going to cover, we're going to cover soccer, they then go to the classroom teacher and say, I'm going to do soccer, what does Jimmy need for to be successful um, visually? So for example, that larger ball, um, like a darker area of the gym, just where there's um, less a, a visual clutter, et cetera. Um, then go to the parents and say, you know, you know Jimmy the best. How do you think this sounds? So you've, you've almost created a recipe for that mm -hmm. individual or student to be the most successful. And I also would definitely gauge, um, say that no size, no one size fits all but see how week one goes, see how the peers react. Because that's something we don't want either is separating a student and making it wholly obvious that, oh, they're different, they're separate. Come up with activities where, you know, there's a peer, there's a buddy mentor system in there where, you know, if you know Jimmy needs a little bit of, of activity modification, get some buddies in there and say like, okay, we're doing volleyball, soccer, or excuse me, beach ball, soccer over here. Who'd like to play that? And include some other kids and then have another activity so i think it's um it's creating a recipe that 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 student can cer certainly be most successful at but it, it does take it takes a whole village indeed it does and I, I love your example as well as there's the one goal for the whole class but there's three different options and entry points to having the students work on those skills and you know i feel even if there's one kid with ap who needs a who has an ap goal it's you know, universal design. It may meet the other needs of students in the class. So it's really just adjusting that mindset. I know you all have to go and teach you know, your students. So I, Megan and Maeve, I'm so appreciative of your time and your expertise and your brilliance. I've learned so much and I'm so inspired. Um, thank you, thank you for all you do for our kids. We really appreciate you. And thank you to all who joined us. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching this event brought to you by CVI Now here at Perkins School for the Blind. Go to cvinow.org to learn more.